Hi guys, it's Christina here and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I wanted to share with you this watercolor illustration um, that I did and I decided to share the sketching process with you as well. Uh, I know it makes the video longer but at the same time I really enjoy watching how other people sketch and how they approach the whole character design aspect of things so I hope you enjoy it too. And I seen a lot of people using like a lot of guidelines when they're drawing and how they start the face and the body as basic shapes and then they add more details to it and I'm aware that this might be the correct way of doing it but for some reason I never found it easier for me it's always been easier and more interesting to start off like straight with the details of the face you know with eyes lips nose and things like that and build from them because that lets me really see who my character is gonna be basically every time i'm starting to develop a character i'm starting with like a very basic idea of what i want to do and um then as i go the features change um and I just find it easier to work that way, so hopefully you guys don't mind that <laughs> this is the way I do it, but I just find it easier, it's the way I've always done it. And the basic concept for this drawing was I wanted this girl that is wearing this coral jacket and there are these clownfish swimming all around her and they're sort of living in her jacket and like around her and that's but I started off with as an idea. I didn't really know what I wanted the girl to look like, but as I'm saying, you know, once I draw the shape of the face and the eyes, I sort of go from there, like I learn about my character, if you know what I mean. So it's easier to finish it off. And after I was done with my sketch, I started coloring in parts of the drawing with my uh, Prismacolor pencils. I haven't used them in a while, I haven't really used colored pencils in a little while, um, I've been more into painting lately, um, so it was a bit of a struggle, but I made it work, it happened, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm happy with the way it looked um, at the end. Um, in real life it actually looks kind of better, and not that I want to make up excuses if I, or anything, but I'm still trying to figure out this camera and basically the camera like when I film something it creates two files and one of the files is the video in like really low quality and the other file is sort of better quality and for some reason when I was transferring the clips for this video I transferred the files that are with lower quality oh. <laughs> and, and um, I erased the good files, which was kind of stupid, but hopefully it won't happen again. But anyway, this being said, um, after I did all the coloring with my pencil, I started adding more details with some white acrylic paint just to the center of her lips and a little bit of an eyeliner, you would say. And then I added some black details with my... Uh, Copic motor liner and um, that was sort of to tie her look with the whole clownfish concept that I had going on and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out so the next thing I did was I covered the little clownfish with some uh, masking fluid and I started adding some yellow tones and orange tones and red tones with my watercolors and I didn't um, start painting the coral jacket uh, with an idea of specifically how I wanted it to look in the end so I started off with a light wash of color and I waited for it to dry and then I sort of decided what I want to do um, because at these beginning stages I was sort of wondering whether I wanted to make it look really abstract or where I, where I want to make it look very structured and in the end where 
when um, the first wash of color was dried, I decided that I want to go for something more structured. So I added some details with my pencil and I continue adding color, basically the same colors that I used previously um, to specific places where I felt um, they would work. And I think, you know, if I was to do it again, I would, I would change a few things, but uh, it's not as bad as it could have been. <laughs> nothing, nothing really horrible happened with this drawing, like there wasn't a major fail with this drawing. I wasn't majorly disappointed with it in the end. Um, so I suppose that's a good sign. Um, but yeah, so um, maybe we should talk a little bit about materials. I used mixed media paper for this drawing and mixed media paper is my go-to type of paper. It's my favorite type of paper and I would literally use it for everything. Um, and it's, I think I even prefer it compared to watercolor paper. Or maybe I just prefer it to the watercolor paper that I'm currently using. The, my mixed media paper and my watercolor paper, they're both by the same brand, Dalaruni. I was never able to pronounce this correctly. Um, but for some reason, I'm experiencing some issues with the watercolor paper. Um, you will probably see me using it really soon and maybe I'll talk a little bit more about my issues with it in that video. I'm not saying you shouldn't buy it, it's just not working for me, I think. Um, the masking fluid that I'm using is, uh, Windsor, is by Windsor & Newton and I'm not sure if my problem is actually with the masking fluid or with the watercolor paper that I have. I'm not convinced, but you know, as I said, we'll talk about this in another video. Um, I already mentioned that the color pencils that I use are the Prismacolor pencils. I have the 72 set um, and I really like them. I sort of want to try the Faber-Castell uh, Polychromos, but um, I feel like I should get back into the whole color pencil thing first before I start investing in other pencils. Um, the marker that you just seen me use is just my Black Spectrum Noir marker. Um, uh, the watercolor paint that I use is by Pipio and it's the 24 color set. And I'm actually really happy with this paint, uh, it does the job. Uh, I might look into buying a different kind after I'm done with it, but for now I'm happy. Um, it's, it's, it's not that expensive, but at the same time I feel it is a good enough quality. Um, and you can really achieve a lot of things with the color range that they're providing. I'm really happy with it. The um, brushes that I use are the Pentel Aquash brushes. I have this um, set that comes with like three brushes that are different thickness, different size. And these brushes, I know people either love them or they hate them. And I love them. For me, they were an absolute game changer. Because before that, I was always reluctant to use watercolors. Just because... You know, when I use watercolors, I need to be sitting on my desk and I need to leave my jar with water there on the surface that's like even and I should be careful not to spill a lot water all over my drawing and things like that and I keep forgetting my brushes in the water and it's destroying them. And it's just, I know it's not that big of a deal, but I'm kind of lazy at times and I'm so bad with cleaning up after you use paint that I, I'm just, I was just avoiding using paint of any sort for a very long time. But these brushes are very convenient because I can actually take them with me and sit on my couch and paint something and I don't need to really worry about mess. Like, what's the worst thing that can happen? I drop my brush and I leave a tiny mark on my couch and I just clean it afterwards, you know, it's fine. 
um, it's not as bad as pouring like a jar of um, water all over your things. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention is, I don't know if you've noticed in the beginning, uh, but I was really struggling with her hair. I was not sure what I want to do with it and I just decided leave it, finish the coloring and then go back to the hair and when everything was sort of colored, um, you know, her jacket and her face, I sort of had this, you know, thought of, oh, maybe I should do this like white, light grayish hair, just something really, really simple. And I used my mechanical um, eraser, uh, I think it's by Derwent, to erase the color pencil on her forehead just so I can add those strands of hair that are sort of falling on her forehead. And I added some details with my Jelly Roll pen, but uh, and I added some details with my colored pencils. But yeah, that's pretty much all I can say about this drawing. It was a lot of fun to do, and it was one of those rare moments in time where nothing goes dramatically wrong with your drawing. There is not like a massive fail moment in the drawing. There was not a moment when I was like, oh man, like, why did I do this? Like, I can't fix this. This ruined it. This this is the end. Like, I should throw this away and I should start all over. Which is kind of like a rare thing for me to say. Like, I'm usually always really majorly unhappy with something. But yeah, this is the final drawing here and I put it in this frame just because it's easier for me to film it. Um, to show you what it looks like. It's not necessarily filmed because I want to keep it in the frame or because I want to keep it on my wall. Uh, but it was just for the purposes of this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video. Bye!